Hello everybody who is watching out there and welcome to the Tony Spot Newsfeed. Today uh, I'm back with another video for you and um, I want to keep the intro very short today because uh, the content of the video clip is a little bit uh, longer today. Um, our topic are anti-roll bars or sway bars and um, yeah there's a lot to talk about when it comes to anti-roll bars because the, the whole uh, thing about those uh, parts is, is not super easy to explain and because of that the video takes a little bit longer. Um, I would say let's get it started. We talk about anti-roll bars. I hope you enjoy the video and let's go. So first of all when it comes uh, to anti-roll bars it is important to to understand um, when the anti-roll bar will work and when the anti-roll bar will uh, take influence um, on your suspension package. When you're driving in a straight line and there are some bumps which you are crossing, um, your suspension normally gets compressed left and right in the same way when you're driving on a bump. And um, in this case, your anti-roll bar will move left and right at the same way, upwards and downwards again. And in this case, the anti-roll bar will not uh, make the suspension package uh, harder or take any influence on it. The anti-roll bar will start to work when your car is cornering and one side of the suspension gets more compressed than the other one because in this case the anti-roll bar will move like this left and right in different ways and then um, depending on, on the thickness of your anti-roll bar the anti-roll bar will make your shock package um, stiffer when the car is cornering. Imagine you are steering to the left into a corner and your car will lean onto the right side um, and you maybe can see that your anti-roll bar here on, on this side will move upwards and the other one not because the left rear tire normally uh, will uh, stay on the ground and will not get compressed a lot. And as long as there is a difference in compression between uh, one side to the other side and your anti-roll bar will move uh, differently left and right then your shock package will get uh, influenced by the anti-roll bar. That's uh, important to know before we start with uh, with this topic because um, sometimes um, a few people I think they, they think that you will make your shock package harder or softer when you change the anti-roll bar but this is not completely right. So always keep that in mind your car needs to lean from one to the other side during cornering to make your anti-roll bar working. If you want to change your sway bar on the car it is uh, very important to first um, check up the sway bar um, because it is important that the sway bar itself is completely flat and straight when you mount it to your car. Um, it is very easy to check it just place it on a straight and flat uh, surface on your setup board for example and then you will uh, easily see by feeling and, uh, and touching the sway bar that it is straight or even not. When it's not straight I recommend to, to replace it uh, with, a, with a new one, with a fresh one because um, you maybe can uh, use uh, some tools to, to maybe uh, put it back in the right conditions but it's yeah not so easy and if you want to uh, be, be good in your mind as well when driving then it's better to use a new and straight sway bar. When it uh, comes to, to the mounting process in the car it's uh, super sensitive and, and precise and you don't have a good chance to, to do this perfectly when your sway bar is not straight from the beginning. Okay, uh, now we're talking about sway bar mounting and um, here you can see a sway bar mounted in my uh, race car. It is uh, super important first of all to mount your sway bar absolutely uh, centered here into the car that you have uh, the same uh, distances here left and right and that you can uh, make sure that the end points of your sway bar are yeah at um, nearly the same uh, position here on the arm because when you later on uh, mount um, the linkages here onto your sway bar then it is important that these two linkages here that uh, they that they are in the same angle. I mean it's very easy to explain when your sway bar is not mounted uh, centered when it's a little bit more to left or right then your linkages they will be like this or like this and you want them both to be in the same position 
for yeah the best possible geometry. Um, it is important to to mount the sway bar in in a way that it is uh, moving freely and best. Uh, the sway bar should fall down by its own weight when you lift it a little bit. Then you know that that it's absolutely free. And um, in this case, my car has a ball raised uh, sway bar mount. And there are other cars on the market where you have uh, a little plastic mount with a crab screw to hold your sway bar. And uh, when you have a mount like this, you can adjust the play and the tightness of the sway bar uh, with, a, with a crab screw in the plastic insert. Take your time when you are doing this. It's a very sensitive process. And your goal should always be to reach a sway bar with the minimal possible slope in the sway bar um, mount, but with a maximum uh, free falling sway bar here when you lift it and let it fall down. That's uh, the first important steps when you're mounting a sway bar. This process sometimes can take some minutes because um, it is, as I said before, super sensitive when you have to grab screws here. Um, sometimes only maybe uh, a little turn on the grab screw will change the game completely. So take your time and make sure that your sway bar does not have a lot of play and that it is absolutely centered and flat. Now we are coming to, to the next step where we would like to connect the sway bar with the linkage. The linkage is mounted here on your lower arm and uh, before you mount it you always should check that the linkage is um, yeah absolutely moving free without any any blockings um, because um, sometimes when you, when you don't clean up your car uh, for for quite some time or sometimes uh, you maybe will forget to clean uh, your sway bar linkage and especially here in the rear um, during the outdoor season you are collecting a lot of dust and dirt with your uh, sway bar linkages so always clean these two ball cups and ball studs because there's a lot of dust and dirt inside and you sometimes will maybe forget to clean it. Check that you don't have a lot of uh, unwanted slope here in the parts and make sure that it's absolutely moving free. And when you are sure about that, you can connect your linkage then to, to the sway bar and you can use the grab screw here to, to mount it safe and good on the sway bar. Uh, when you have done this on both sides, it is uh, yeah very easy now to get a first first impression, a feeling left and right, that it maybe is feeling the same with uh, almost the same uh, amounts of, of slop and play and when your sway bar is, starts to lift and all these things. You can feel this very good with your own hands, but uh, to get a little bit more precise to that, I will show you my personal uh, way to, to do it uh, later on. Um, first of all, or another information at this point, is um, that it is important to, to check um, the length of your sway bar linkages. Uh, normally, when you build up your car, there is um, a recommended uh, length in the manual. And yeah, in most of the cases, these uh, manufacturer uh, informations, they are pretty good and when you build the linkages with uh, the lengths out of your manual your car should be okay and the sway bar system should work in a very good way. Um, if you build your car and you are you're not sure and you maybe think that your sway bar uh, points too much here uh, upwards or downwards um, you can uh, you can use a rule from Ryan Maker who uh, described it in his book RC Maker's uh, Speed Secrets um, he always tries to get the sway bar staying absolutely uh, straight and to check this you can use a, a caliper and then you can check the height above the ground from the sway bar here at the sway bar mount and you can check the same height then on a different point here somewhere really close to the end of the sway bar before the sway bar goes into the, the linkage mount and then you can check that your sway bar is in the same height at the rear and at the front and then you know that your sway bar is uh, in a good uh, position left and right. Um, it is important to 
when you check this that you have set your droop which you want to use on the track for the next run because when you change uh, the droop to, to less or more droop the height of your sway bar will also change and then you may readjust the height of your linkages but this is sometimes uh, yeah a lot of work to do it takes a lot of time so always check it when your droop is set and then uh, adjust your sway bars in the next step okay now i want to explain um, as short as possible how i set my sway bar system um, after i yeah mounted the sway bar onto the car after i make sure that the linkages are both in the same length after i made sure that the sway bar is um, as straight as possible in the car um, we want to have a sway bar which lifts the left and the right side of the suspension at the same time so it is not nice when you have a sway bar which is maybe uh, when you lift it on the left at some value your rear right wishbone will also start to lift and you want to lift the left side when you make it in the opposite direction at the same time at the same value of, of height or of lifting um, and this is uh, very important because then you can be sure that your sway bar system will work with the same intensity uh, when the car is cornering to the left or to the right so when your sway bar uh, system is completely uh, tweaked or completely uh, lifting at very uh, different uh, values then you have to to check the sway bar that it's uh, really straight then you have to check your car if there may be some some uh, things are not adjusted in a proper way or some some parts maybe are damaged or bent but when you when you are sure that your camber your droop and everything is set in a perfect way that your sway bar is moving free and that all these values are okay then you can uh, do the final check and i always use my uh, my uh, caliper to to check the values to make sure that the, the sway bar system is lifting at the same time left and right i do it like this all the time and i have uh, only good um, yeah good results with this um, use the caliper make sure that you set the value to zero i use the caliper here on um, on the drive uh, shaft <laughs> forgot that word uh, i use it here on the drive shaft at the bottom of the drive shaft and as close as possible to the wheel hex because then you can make sure that you have the same point the same access point left and right so i place my caliper here under the drive shaft and then i start to lift it slowly and my eyes are only pointed here to the wishbone on the left and as soon as the wishbone starts to lift which is right now i stop it and i check the value which is now here 23.3 then i do the same on the other side i place the caliper at the same position and i lift up the left wishbone and as soon as the right one will start to lift, I will stop, which is now. And there we have, uh, yeah, 22.7. So we have a difference of 0.7 millimeters in, uh, in the lifting moment. Um, for me, this value would be okay. I wouldn't change a lot now, but if you want to get it closer together, um, you can change the length of the linkages here because with these linkages you can take influence on the sensibility and on on the on the movement of of your sway bar and uh, yeah in, in this case when i want to to get the values closer together it is very simple um, the left side now was lifting a little bit more early than the right side which uh, means that i would go some kind of a turn out and some kind of a turn in on this side and then you can check this once again it's always the same process now here it's 23 1 
and here it's 22.8 so now uh, the gap is yeah only three tenths and with this with doing uh, the adjusting see on the linkages you can uh, make your your well-built car even more perfect um, it is not easy to explain it and to to give you a general rule of thumb but take your time during uh, a poor day at home at when you don't know what to do take your car go to your pit table and try to adjust your sway bar system as precise as possible and when you get used to it and when you get used to to these adjustments here then you will understand what it will change when you go a little bit higher or lower with the linkages and then you will uh, easily see how how that will affect the values and you can uh, yeah create your car with the best possible suspension package and when the sway bar system is working left and right in the same way you will uh, get a better performance out of the car important is that you always do it in the same way for yourself that you can uh, work with your with your tools and with your values here on the car um, there are some other ways as i said before to to make these tests with some uh, height gauges and all these things and there are some other interesting videos uh, here on YouTube from other guys who are explaining it yeah in the same way but with a different different way of doing it um, for me for myself the way with the the caliper works works okay and I'm happy with that so this is all I can tell you about my adjusting process of of the uh, sway bar system it is super sensitive and you don't have to to go crazy with your values but uh, when your car is built absolutely perfectly and straight then you should easily reach a suspension which is lifting left and right at almost the same time yeah as you can see the whole uh, story about the anti-roll bars is not super easy and it's not possible to explain it in a five minute uh, video clip because there are so many aspects and so many things you have uh, to do on your car to to get the anti-roll bars um, dialed in perfectly so um, sometimes uh, you get asked on the racetrack um, which kind of sway bar you should mount onto the car when the conditions are changing or which sway bars are good when there is low grip and which are better in high grip um, it is not super easy to to say because there is no general general rule about it um, most of the manufacturers they they sell the cars with a 1.3 in the front and a 1.2 anti-roll bar in the rear um, i would recommend to maybe get a 1.4 for the front and a 1.3 for the rear as well then you have uh, several tuning options you can go with a 1.3 all around or you can go uh, one harder all around with 1.4 and 1.3 um, or you can run the standard uh, setting with 1.3 and 1.2 in the rear um, i just can tell you what uh, ryan maker has uh, written down in his book uh, speed secrets which i highly recommend to you guys if you don't uh, have it in your hands right now um, there are a lot of explanations um, about anti-roll bars as well and i will tell you what ryan maker is uh, saying about uh, the anti-roll bar change he um, says when you change the front anti-roll bars when you use a thicker one a thicker front anti-roll bar will increase the overall steering most noticeably uh, in turn in and high speed and it makes the car more edgy and more difficult to drive so as you can imagine a thicker front anti-roll bar will make the car more reactive in the front because it will stiffen up the front a little bit more when the car moves from side to side when you go a little bit uh, thinner maybe from 1.4 to 1.3 or to 1.2 this will uh, decrease the steering and make the car easier to drive the front will be less twitchy and more stable at high speed also very simple to to imagine when you have a softer anti-roll bar in the front your front end will not be um, stiffened up as much as with a harder anti-roll bar during the cornering process and so the car will give you the feeling of more roll and more soft uh, more softer handling in the rear um, it's a little bit of difficult a different story a thicker anti-roll bar will decrease the on power rear traction and the off power rotation so that means that uh, with a thicker anti-roll bar you will have a car which feels more stable going into the corner and a little bit less stable going out of the corner when you hit the throttle when you go thinner with the anti-roll bar in the rear that will uh, increase the on power rear traction and it will um, 
increase the off power rotation as well. So a thinner anti-roll bar gives you more grip out of the corner and your car will rotate a little bit better around the apex when you are in the center of the corner. So this is um, the rule of thumb when it comes to the anti-roll bars and thanks to the book of Ryan Maker I was able to explain that a little bit better now for you guys. Um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the video. A lot of information in it. Um, yeah, take your time when you adjust your sway bars and when you build your car because these sway bars, these anti-roll bars, they are um, doing more than most of the people ever uh, thought about and it's important to have them set it up in a perfect way. Thank you guys for watching. That's the news feed for today. A long video. Thanks for watching and until the next time, race with Tony Sport. You will never race alone. Goodbye and have a great day.